Yeah. The rewards of self-belief have turned me into an addict. Yeah. Girls cheating, being hoes has turned me into a savage. Before I what is going on guys? I could here with another video for you today and today we're going to be playing some more of the Dream Daddy series. Now, it's been an amazing last couple episodes. The last episode not so much with uh, only getting to see on the date with Matt, but hopefully we can go ahead and bump that up soon. But yeah, let's get right into the video. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turned off all the lights and walked down to the uh, hall to my room. I wonder if a man is still awake. That kid needs some sleep. If, as I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She snuffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> In the dark, I see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed. Knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. <sighs> Fucking hell. <sighs> I don't know, man. I... I don't want to be overbearing, but at the same time, I don't want to just leave her like this. I, I can't leave her, though. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Amanda, get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Wow. Why has her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and takes her still freezing burned waffle <laughs> out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. <sighs> I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, this blows over and things go back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at the picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. And then in, in it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure unadulterated fear. Unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. And she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she stood in the middle of the street and screamed. And I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging through uh, around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does to make a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah, I want to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong. And I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. But whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Aww. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. 
pull out a cake from the refrigerator and pull it and put it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad? It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over and this is beautiful. Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Ah. It's strawberry. And then it gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve herself some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. <laughs> I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Aww. I guess just to start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The best friend? You got it. Wow. Proud of you. Hmm. Anyways, ever since she got acceptance, uh, the acceptance lover, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot of time with Grace and Emma P, and I just thought it was all in my head for a while. But then I found out ro uh, from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for Calc AB final. Yikes. Yeah. So, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's the thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So were you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I had told about, uh, talked about the crush was MR, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. Man, of size. And then one day I invite everybody to out uh, to go get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I just eat nachos at home, right? But we're out of chips, and I really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway, I get to the food court and who do I see there but uh, Grace, Emma P, MR, and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma P, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does and Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Boring one? Well, yeah, but that's not the important part. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed and just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, my dad, which only further contributed to my uh, to this shitty day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the know thing's been going on. And sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand. That's okay. You're trying. So what happened next? Oh, okay, get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Emma pulls out her phone and reads word for word an audriously long string of text messages. Mm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, I do not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Mm -hmm. They were dating in secret for like months. So I... I told her she's being really terrible friend and she's like well if you think I'm so terrible then just stop being my friend and I was like okay and then she left me on red and then wait left me on red what's that oh like she saw my message and didn't reply I know because there are read receipts I don't know what read receipts are but I'm just gonna nod and pretend like I understand gotcha so while all of this is happening I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she at least is being kind of reasonable and i'm venting to her about how pissed i am at everybody and Aww. stuff and then out of nowhere no one texts me and it's like how could you say that about me 
I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me Emma, R, uh, Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her uh, to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but definitely sounds bad. <sighs> There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but uh. Emma R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't that enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected that I can't, almost can't take it. What can I possibly say to help? Oh, no. Anyways, that's it. That's a whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. I mean, you have every right to be upset over it, though. Whenever a friend stabs you in the back like that, that's just something shitty. You know, you never want that. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Honey, high school sucks. You make friends with people just because they're there. And we're still living in your hometown, it's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. But once you go to college, and once you get into the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people and it's going to be easier to make friends with people who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. And some of them only last a little while. And that's okay too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at our school. Ultimately, I think this says more about the character, their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well that's their, their problem. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat the whole cake? Huh. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. <laughs> Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Welcome. You've got dads. Oh, you got a message from Craig? Hello, Amanda's dad. Cool. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Oh, man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still strong. Strong. I am strong. Ha. Don't I know it. See, I've been reading up about whey protein. You use that at all? I figured it'd help me develop a bit more muscle. Yeah, I know what it is. My children are having a tea party and they want to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You, you're also invited. That's a wrong you Physical invitation to follow. Cool, I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda said. Attend that party? Ooh, yeah, I'll attend that party. Coffee time. You know dads love coffee. Gonna brew myself something black as midnight and <laughs> on a moonless night. I put on a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. Hey, this one spells out sorrow. Amanda, ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. You're gonna tackle it head on. Mm. No, are you ready for the thing we're gonna go to? Uh, we're gonna do today. The thing you promised you do. Honey, I already told you I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over and you don't ever read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. The tea party, dad. Nope, I don't remember that. 
Craig's kids? The hand-drawn invitation? Amanda walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper, inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. They spelled cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. I can go outside in sweatpants. Nothing stopping me. <sighs> Dad, just I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Fuck authority. Put on going outside pants. Put on going outside pants. Hello, thank you for coming to our tea party. I do my best bow and present my daughter. Who thanks them with a courtesy? With a courtesy. This way, please. Brian and Hazel lead us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals, and Matt and his daughter, Carmen's daughter, here too. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Hey. The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. I taste a hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmen's Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. Please, have a seat. I sit down between Amanda and Matt. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Hey. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to us. Sorry, we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. Hmm. See, Amanda? Amanda gives me a knowing look, and I return an obliging wink. She rolls her eyes. Huh. Is that really something your daughter had to pressure you into, Brian? I give Amanda another, even more exaggerated wink. She rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you all for coming, uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to come for some high tea. Now, if you all put your, uh, put on your designated tiaras. Huh. Tiaras? He's just, there's little tiaras sitting on everyone's plates. Well, except for Brian's. His is a softball helmet. Oh, we ran out of tiaras. I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, you're royalty. Please act like it. Whoa. Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off and into the bushes. Ah. I'll get that later. Hi, everyone. Craig comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. Dad, is the tea ready? Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, it's been, um, steeping for a while now. Awesome. Oh. Would you girls like to serve your guest tea? No, thank you. We'd much appreciate our servant's help. <sighs> Craig leans over to me. Mm -hmm. That's me. Craig places teacups in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm, awfully fluorescent for tea. I clink my teacup with mats and take a sip. Hey. Good lemonade. It's tea. Oh. Right. Very good tea. I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. So, what do we do at tea parties? Mm -hmm. We enjoy the splendors of upper-class society, Father. She takes a dainty bite of her sandwich cookie. <laughs> Marvelous. So, the meeting of princesses has been called to order. <laughs> here, here. But I am a warrior princess. I hunt and stuff. And I have, like, a really cool sword. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. I'll be a rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. Can, they be more than, can there be more than one? Mm -hmm. Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a space princess, too. Mm -hmm. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... A history channel princess, hacker princess, rude boy princess. I'm a hacker princess. I surfed the information super highway on my cyber deck, hacking into mainframes and unleashing havoc on the mega corpse of dystopian Neo Metropolis. I also rollerblade everywhere. That sounds like Jet Set Radio. Right. I think I'll be a landscaper and general contracting princess. Hey. Barista Princess reporting for duty. Bro. Hi, everybody. CrossFit Princess here. Not now, servants. Mm. If it weren't for the Princess's uprising, it would be you serving me. <laughs> we sip tea for a little longer and then the girls run off to fight dinosaurs as 
Space Rockstar Warrior Princess. Princesses, I think. They grow up so fast. It was like yesterday that I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Oh. Did she make you serve it too? You betcha. Carmencita made me actually brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Hmm. Pitfall, your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was choice. Ah, hey. oh, thanks. Ah. It's really nice to have the girls getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad we moved into this community. Hey. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know? I didn't even realize. I don't even know if Amanda does either. But I guess they're right. All of the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. I'm so proud of her. You better, <laughs> you better not proud dad cry at this tea party, ego. <laughs> I brought extra word jumbles if anyone would like to kill some time while the girls play. Ooh, the day rolls on and the girls all get uh, tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them the best ones later. We all clean up and help uh, put away the tea sets and tables, then head out as Daisy and Carmencita fall asleep on their dad's shoulders. Hmm. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, Hacker Princess. Huh? You want dinner? Nah, I filled up on cookies. Me too. I'm tired. Hmm. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Huh? But in a good way. But also, in a kind of scary way. Also, oh. I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't wanna let them down. Is it because you still feel bad about dropping that bomb in front of your cousin that one time? <laughs> I corrupted her dad. She secondhand smokes now. Well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as role model. Mm. Shucks, pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Nice. Welcome. You've got dads. All right. All right, guys. So that's going to actually go ahead for this episode today. It's actually a little bit shorter than the other episodes with on, which I'm not mad at. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the whole talk I had with Amanda. It was pretty heavy there for a second. And then the tea party kind of lined the mood back up. And yeah, I enjoyed the episode overall. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that playlist of the Dream Daddy series if you want to catch up with the Dream Daddy series. Yeah, because that's what plays so far. And uh, yeah, till next time, guys. I'll see you later.